Hey, this is Digital Byte Computing. Today we're talking about how to set up RAID on your Mac. We are running the latest Mac OS Sierra at the time of this video, and it is super easy to set up RAID. There are different types of RAID. You may be familiar with RAID. You've got RAID 0, RAID 1. In more enterprise, you've got RAID 5, 6, and 10, and a whole different range of different RAID types that let you do things like combining disks together to form larger disks. You can set up redundancy so that if a disk fails, you don't lose all the data and that sort of stuff. All right, so on the Mac itself, we've got two hard drives plugged in, two simple USB hard drives to show you the concept, but this will work exactly the same if you have larger external hard drives as well. We want to go into disk utility. So type in disk utility into your spotlight search. You can also navigate the disk utility through your applications and utilities folder uh, on your finder, okay? Now, in here, we'll just make this smaller. These are our two hard drives. So it's a SanDisk USB drive and a Toshiba USB drive. You can see the specs of both of them. They're both 16 gig big, all right? And now we want to raid these together. So from within the finder, we wanna go into file, raid assistant. We're then presented with the raid assistant wizard, and we can select the type of raid that we want to create. So you can create a RAID 0, a RAID 1, and a JBOD. JBOD is just a bunch of disks, is what JBOD stands for. So as the name suggests, RAID 0 is for striped data. So this splits the data evenly across two or more disks without parity or information, with speed as the intended goal. So essentially, it's gonna grab those two 16 gig hard drives and make them one large disk roughly around 32 gig in size. Um, with RAID, they both will need to be plugged into the computer to enable your RAID to work, all right? So striped, you're grabbing both hard drives, both USB sticks, making them into one larger disk. So from your operating system, it sees them as one larger disk. Now, this obviously does not have any redundancy. So if one disk fails, if you lose one of the hard drives or one of the USB sticks, you lose all the data. So just be very careful when you are setting up a RAID 0, a striped setup. Second option is mirrored, which is a RAID 1. And as it, as it says here, it's an exact copy of a set of data of two or more disks. This type is useful when your read performance or reliability is more important. So mirrored, it's gonna mirror the content across the two USB sticks. So I've got two USBs plugged in. These, in this instance, they're both 16 gig, and it's gonna mirror the, the data from one to the other. So when I copy a file onto this RAID, it has two copies of that file on each USB drive. So the benefit of this is that if I lose one USB drive, I have the second one to, you know, to come in. So it has really good redundancy. So RAID 1 is really handy if you have a whole group of disks and, you, and you're very concerned about your data integrity. Then you've got concatenated, which is a JBOD. So concatenated disks is not a RAID. It is just a group of disks connected together for the purpose of creating a larger disk. So similar to a RAID 0, a concatenated is not known as a RAID. A JBOD is not considered a RAID, but will act similarly across. So it will grab a whole bunch of disks and just make them one big group of disks into one single disk, okay? So again, similar to your RAID 0, there is no redundancy in place, okay? So for the purpose of this, let's just create a striped RAID 0. We wanna click on Next, and we wanna select the two hard drives that we want to use. So we're gonna select my SanDisk and my Toshiba. So these are the two disks. Again, you can do this with multiple disks. So if you have multiple disks, select all the disks that you want to be part of your RAID group. Next, we're gonna call this something. Let's call it RAID 0 Demo. What format do you wanna do it? Is it gonna be macOS Extended Journal or Case Sensitive Journal? We're gonna leave that as default. It's gonna be RAID 0 capacity of 31.68. So as I said, it's gonna be just under 32. 
and what do you want your chunk size to be? We're gonna leave that as a default. All right, so it says down the bottom for best performance, choose a chunk size that the machine that matches the size of the data you're, accessi you're, you're accessing. For example, video processing may access large chunks of data, but database may access small chunks of data. All right, so just be, just be weary of that um, when you are uh, creating this. So if you have large video files, you wanna maybe make that a little bit bigger, for example. Creating the RAID 0 set as RAID 0 demo. It's gonna format those disks and it's giving you a warning that all data on those disks will be deleted. So just be wary of that before you click on create any data that is existing on those USB sticks will be deleted and will be wiped. You will not be able to recover this data. So if you're happy with that, we can click create. It's going to unmount those two disks. So you can see that they've disappeared from my desktop here and it's creating the new partition map and the new raid group itself, the new raid setup. So after maybe a few minutes that raid will complete, the raid creation will complete and you should have a nice big green tick. If it does not have a green tick, you've done something wrong or something's gone wrong during the process and we may have to start again. Click on done. And now you'll see that there are two disks here, right? But one new raid set, which is this one here. You can see right from here, you've got both disks. I've also got it here on my desktop. So I can go into get info on this disk and actually see that it shows it as just under 32 gig, which is great, which is exactly what we wanted to see. These are the two disks in here, 16 gig each compiling of just under 32 gig. And I can go into here and I can delete the RAID. So if I want to get those disks back, I can delete the RAID from here. So we select delete raid, delete the raid, make sure that's what you want to do. It'll remove those disks from that raid group. You can see some show details, you can actually see what's happening. So it's unmounting the volume of the raid and destroying the raid, the raid set with this ID number. So that may take a little bit of time to do. And then you'll get your USB disks back. So that will finish. Again, we should see a nice green tick to let us know that the RAID has been destroyed. You can click on done. Now you'll see we've got two disks in here. They're currently uninitialized. There's nothing really on them. So you can go ahead and click on erase and reformat these particular disks so that you can use them again as single standalone disks. All right, so we're just doing the sand disk one now. You can see again the status of what's actually happening and that's it. So now we've just got the disc back and it's at capacity of 16 gig. And then you can just do the same thing for your other discs if you wanna use them as standalone discs again. So that is my summary on how to set up a RAID on a Mac. So if you found that video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel Digital by Computing just on the button there for more videos.